Let's talk about the term midsize. This conversation comes up once every couple months, I feel like, but watch this video and then I'll get into it. So consider myself a small fat because according to what I've read, that's where I fit. However, and now we're about to get to my question. I don't want to describe myself as plus sized and a small fat if that's not correct or if that's harmful, but I also don't want to use the term midsize to communicate or engage with any kind of fat phobias. Man, I just feel like we've lost the plot so heavily if we're discussing like the like where you are oriented within the realm of being fat, small fat, mid fat. If you don't know, maybe you're seeing like a, a thing on your screen right now, but there's like different categories that these people like to orient themselves in. And based off those categories, that's how much discrimination you have. So like if you're a smaller fat, then you're probably facing like almost no discrimination because you can pretty much fit into the realms of most thin people stuff. So it's like no, no problem at all. So like you're probably not dealing with like fitting in bus, like plane seats problems. You're not like breaking furniture. You're not having problems with not being able to find elevators. So like those things are fine. But like then once you start getting to like the mid fat, then the super fat, then the infinite fat, and then the omega level fat, which is like all disrespectful, by the way. I don't know how many times I've heard the infinite fat, and I go like, "That's you." Like, I don't even know why you guys would even call yourself infinite fat. That is so incredibly disrespectful, honestly speaking, dude. I don't know why that's even a, a word, a terminology. And then I think there's one level at the very back end, which is death fat, which is really, really ironic because I don't think these people actually think that there is anything wrong with being fat. So even when you're like six to seven, eight hundred pounds. They do believe that it's, like, not possible for you to die at that weight, which is, like, crazy. But, yeah, that's the thing. But death fat exists, which are those are the people that, like, literally cannot move at all. And, obviously, these are the people that are going to be suffering the most discrimination, which, at that level of body fat, I don't even think that you're – it's not so much about discrimination, but more so about accessibility. Like, you just can't get out of bed in general. And it's it's not even that the, the world isn't made for you at that point. It's just you've done something so incredibly crazy to yourself that – like, there's no way you can even look at anything other than what did I do to myself as the problem. But, yeah, it's so weird nowadays how we, like, orient ourselves in, in places of how much discrimination you have, man. Isn't that weird? Why do we do that nowadays? So, but I also don't want to use the term midsize to communicate or engage with any kind of fat phobia. So, like, midsize, I believe, is just, like, normal size, I believe, or, like, a little bit bigger. question to you is what are your... As someone who is in fat activism spaces and also writes for an online publication where I have discussed this in length, <laughs> I will tell you my opinion on this. So midsize started as a term used to describe people who were at the top of the end of straight sizes and at the bottom of the end of plus sizes. And this was back when most stores only carried up to like a size 12 maybe 14 which is pretty much which most stores carry nowadays like it really hasn't changed very much and i know that these people have a very hard time accepting that like when you're this big right most stores are not going to carry that those particular sizes because it's just not plausible to fit everybody in every size across every style it's just not plausible it's not practical it doesn't make sense to do that but these people always have they always have to have something to complain about and oftentimes it's usually like the same shit over and over and over again like lack of clothes not being able to get in plane tickets or i guess maybe elevator access or doctors being fat phobic because you can't get a surgeon to operate on you because you're so fat that it's like literally impossible to do it or you'll literally die if we go in and like try to cut into you or we put anesthesia on you you literally die that blue haired girl that doesn't make videos on tiktok anymore because i guess she got upset or she got depressed because people were saying that all her takes were bad but the issue when i see like these discussions of, like plus size i think like this like these people should probably stay away from those realms as much as humanly possible because it's so incredibly annexing to hear when somebody says oh you're a you know like if you're plus size then you're a mid fat or you're a super fat or you're this fat and what you're basically doing is like you're that'd be like if black dudes were like oh yeah bro you can't talk about black issues because you're a light skin dog you can't talk about black issues because you're technically kind of white and you're lighter than like you know jamal over here or whatever so that means that you're probably you can't talk on the same issues that we can because because we have more discrimination. It's like you're actively demonizing people that could be helping your organization. It'd be like if I didn't like accept, if I so if I started like a mustache club, right? And I just didn't accept anybody with beards because we only want guys with mustaches and then also it has to be very very thick mustaches instead of like me maybe like accepting guys with like little to no mustache or like just a little bit of peach fuzz on their face or whatever or like the black guy mustache where it's just like a triangle going down on both sides almost like wings or 
maybe some Latina girls that have a little bit of some extra, you know what I'm talking about? I met a lot of Latina girls that got a lot of facial hair and they have to shave. And it's always like an anomaly to when I meet dudes and they come to me and they go, bro, my girlfriend shaves. Like, did you, bro, do you know girls shave their face? And I'm like, yeah, uh, yeah, I knew that. But it is kind of crazy when you first know or you first acknowledge that women have to shave their face. But once you see it, you're like, it does make sense that women do grow a little bit of facial hair, but they shave themselves, which is good for you because that means that like you don't have to date, you don't have to kiss up on a girl with a little bit of extra mustache face. Um, I've had a lot of women tell me that it's really uncomfortable to kiss mustaches and beards and things like that. Luckily, mine is very, very soft because I condition it and I oil it up and stuff like that. I take care of mine favorably. It wasn't like that at the beginning when I first started growing out my mustache during COVID. I had literal dandruff in my mustache. Like I remember literally washing it so often and then I remember one time, like, I, after I was done washing it, I remember I was, like, doing this, and flakes would come out. Like, I was like, what the hell is this? And I looked in the mirror. I was like, oh, my God. Like, I literally had dandruff in my mustache because I was, like, killing all the oils in my mustache, which is not something you want to do. But I don't even know what we're talking about right now. But let's go back so we can hear. Stores only carried up to, like, a size 12, maybe 14. Right. So there were a lot of people that fell in between that range. But now a lot of places have started expanding their sizes. So but apparently not enough, uh, not enough to where these people literally still complain about it on a daily basis. Straight no. size stores can carry up to a size 16, 18, even 20 sometimes. Yeah, but they don't like that. Usually if they do carry those clothing sizes, like if you're like Samira, you go into the store and then you just like make a video about how disgusting the clothes actually are because everything's like grandma oriented. That's what they say. They say it all looks like a grandmother would wear it or maybe your great grandmother would wear it in the 1960s or something like that because the clothing items themselves don't look bad. Or you could be on that like glitter and lasers lifestyle where the mannequin in the plus size section looks so ugly that you have to go in and you have to, <laughs> you have to strip the mannequin mannequin in the store and then apply different clothing items to it to make it look more i guess like that's that's like so so it looks more appetizing for plus size people i don't know at that point you just like you might as well just apply to a job and while that happened there have also been people on the internet who have co-opted the term mid-size to mean oh i'm just not a size small which is also wrong i don't find fault in people who use the term mid-size solely to see other people who have their same body type trying on clothes. Like I have seen people say like mid-size try on and they're trying on, you know, an extra large, a one X, whatever. I think being able to find community and find people that look like you and you feel represented and you see what clothes would look like on you, all of those things are valid. The problem comes in where people are using the term mid-size and they're trying to distance themselves from fatness, like you said, or they're like, oh, well, I'm not fat. And they treat actual fat people like shit because I, I mean, I see what she's saying, but this is like the same thing. This is the same problem because these people have a very, very hard time putting language together. I feel like like they use words that are not necessarily wrong, but almost never reflect the actual reality of what they're saying. And I'll give you a really good example. Like I hear them all the time say I'm plus size, right? But Plus size is such an ambiguous term. It could just mean almost anything at all. It could literally mean five or 10 pounds over, or it could mean you're 500 pounds over. It's literally everything in between. So if you have a problem with thinner people using the words midsize to qualify themselves in the rank of, I want to like, oh, I'm not fat. I'm midsize. I understand that. Like, I get it. Like, you're basically annexing yourself from the fat genre genre. So that way you don't have to, like, proclaim yourself to be fat. But I guess you can somewhat claim that you're fat when the time comes, right? It's like playing two sides of the same coin, if that makes any sense. You understand, like, you can claim that you're midsize, but when the occasion calls for, you can also say that you're fat because you're fitting in a large, technically, like, you're big as fuck or whatever. Those two things can exist simultaneously, right? But you guys literally have this issue with your, within your own organization. You guys will, to the ends of the earth, go, I'm plus size, and then you'll weigh 350. And I look upon you and I go, there is no way you can call yourself plus size or curvy or, or a BBW or just thick. Like these words have absolutely zero meaning nowadays. And you guys have the audacity to sit there and police how other people can say these words. You guys got to fix your own shit can you guys like come together like communitively and like have that organizational meeting i don't know like what kind of room you guys are gonna have to like rent out and like entire opera room or something like that to fit you guys all in there and then record it too so like i guess get a panorama and then talk about why you guys have these issues with the words and then 
come up with new words so we can all have an understanding because you guys adopting plus size, thick, BBW, curvy, whatever the fuck, it means nothing. I don't care. You guys literally don't have, you guys don't have any street cred anymore, okay? Go in and change your fucking words. It's like when people say things like, oh, this is, this is all white supremacy. And then when people say white supremacy, what do you think? You're thinking about dudes walking into your household or you see dudes walking down the street with like pitchforks, knives, and fucking, you know what I'm talking about? Like torches saying we hate black people you're not thinking about like a dude saying like yeah you know i think that like you know white people should exist and i think that like there are these people that genuinely believe that shit you know like people that think that like a white dude putting up a sign that says it's okay to be white they will construe that and say that is racism or this is white supremacy when in general it's not it's obviously fucking not like be people need better words nowadays dude and everything has gotten way too politicized like it's just get better words honestly just get better words and define the shit better or they're like oh well i'm not fat and they treat actual fat people like shit because they have a lot of internalized anti-fat bias that they have not fixed yet yeah but you know what's really interesting about this internalized anti-fat bias is that these people will be the first ones that sit there and tell you that they also have anti-fat bias because it takes a long time to dismantle it and they're still actively dismantling it and i always think like if you haven't done it Right. If you are sitting there and you've been dismantling your anti-fat bias for like 20 years of your life and you still have it, I don't have any hope. I literally have no hope. And sometimes they completely annex people from talking about these arguments because they'll say things like only fat people should be able to talk about this. But like I said before, if you're fitting in like those midsize, small fat, medium fat, super fat, 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 whatever, you have different varieties of who can talk about what and how much you can talk about it, which is really, really crazy because what you're actually doing is like you're basically telling people that if they're smaller they are, they have less value within the conversation, which is not productive at all. So <laughs> it'd be like me going, you can't talk about men's issues because you don't have a penis. Like it doesn't make sense. Like that, you, you know what I'm talking about? That should not be how it is. Like I want everybody to come together because even though you may not have a penis or you may not be black and you can't talk about black issues, I still want you in the conversation because you might be insightful just because you're not fat or just because you don't fit the characteristics of this particular demographic of, of group doesn't mean that you're not going to be insightful enough or have critical thinking skills that can contribute to better thought processes in these organizations, right? That's usually, like, that's that's that would be the ultimate goal, not annexing people because they're smaller than you. I think the term small fat is good. Um... Nobody's using small fat, dude. You know how disrespectful that is to say you're a small fat? It's like, it's like somebody saying skinny fat. Skinny fat is disrespectful because what is it insignifying? You're a small guy, you're a skinny guy, but you got the love handles and you got a little bit of gut. It doesn't look good, it's disrespectful. It's the same shit, like, dude, just... You guys, I, I'm sorry, I don't know why you guys put, like, adjectives in the front of fat and think that somehow that's going to, like, amplify the word or be more descriptive. It just comes off more disrespectful. Small fat, mid fat, fat fat, infinite fat. Like, that shit is so disrespectful, bro. You guys got to come up with different naming schemes on this shit. Um, if you aren't comfortable with the term small fat, I would look at why. And I hear this a lot that people are like, oh, can I just do plus size then? Like, you see what I'm saying? Like, it, uh, why am I not comfortable using the word small fat? Because it's not as good as terminologies like plus size or thick or BBW. Like these things flow off the tongue. But small fat, like if you talk to somebody and they said, like, what size are you? And you went small fat. They'd be like, dude, what the fuck? What is a small fat? Because it's like it's not a very loaded term. Oh, it's not that I don't want to call myself a small fat. It's that other people told me I shouldn't be using that terminology were people who told you that actually in fat activism spaces or i don't think they need to be in fat activism spaces usually you guys get like political brained or you guys get like debate brained where you start to think that i guess the people that don't know about your organization shouldn't be able to talk about it or at least they're less insightful than you which in a lot of cases is not true because you guys are so deeply embedded in your organization that you don't even look from the outside in anymore like you guys are incapable of looking at other people outside your organization therefore it's like impossible for you to recognize that somebody outside of that might have something valuable to say you understand like it, it's just crazy to me how these people cannot recognize that there might be something valuable or having conversations with people that disagree with you or not even disagree with you that maybe don't even know what your organization is maybe that will be like really important dude or was it just a random stranger on the internet who has no idea what they're talking about and you do i came across a video this morning and it led me down a rabbit hole of other videos and i just wanted to share 
Hey friends, you may have noticed that I was on Jubilee's most recent episode of The Middle Ground, Fit Men versus Fat Men. By the way, I was going to do a video on that, but Jubilee really dis dislikes me. We did a we did a live stream with this the other day and it was it got it got taken down. Like Jubilee took down the fucking live stream cuz they were like, "Nah, dude, you're not fucking reacting to our shit. How fucking dare you, you bitch?" That's what they said to me. But not in that not in those words. It was more so like, "We don't like it." No, I didn't know that. Please tell me more. On the show and they said we want you to be on jacked versus fat that was the original title um i remember my first question was i was unaware the two sides had any problems with one if you've been on the internet for any period of time you have had to come across people who are in the fitness space who have a lot of anti-fat bias who spread harmful stereotypes about fat people who are bothered by just us simply existing um, so I kind of find it hard to believe when you say that you didn't know the two sides had an issue with each other or that this would be like a controversial discussion. He probably doesn't mean it in the way that you think about it. Like he probably, bro, it's a dumb thing to, when people talk, I feel like these people take things way too fucking literally. It's like when people say something like, oh, you know, bro, women wear makeup. And then a guy goes, bro, actually... I know a lot of women personally that don't wear makeup, so not all women wear makeup. I know. I know not all women wear makeup. There's nothing is 100%. But you know what I'm saying when I say women wear makeup. Like, most women wear makeup. It's a normative thing that women do, right? You understand? Like, men pee standing up. Yes, men also pee sitting down, but men, for the most part, pee standing up, right? So when, when, when I hear people say this shit and this guy goes, I didn't know that that we disagree with each other he probably just meant from like this like crazy degree like he probably knew that there were people in the fitness industry that thought it was a bad idea to be fat obvious fucking lead like that would the connecting dots there is crazy that the fact that you're even questioning that is insane but he probably didn't know that it was crazy he, didn't, he probably didn't know that it was such like you know annexing of people's um, or how how unfavorable it was to certain demographics. Like that's probably what he was saying. Like the sensitivity was probably what was in within question. But it's really crazy because like you know what he's talking about. An issue with each other, or that this would be like a controversial discussion. Like it's like me going, oh, I had no idea that men and women had such conflicts with like ideologies and things like that but you had never heard about the red pill you know what i'm talking about like you, just because you are in that subsect just because you are in that genre of people that disagree heavily with this particular thing doesn't mean everybody is right like there are a lot of people that don't know who andrew tate is there are a lot of people that don't know what fresh and fit is or like any of these red pill communities right and they don't know that there are literal entire communities of people that like fundamentally dislike women or like like think women shouldn't vote or should be like at the home and shouldn't work and stuff like that there are entire communities but for the most part like sure they probably they they probably are working on the understanding that there is maybe somebody out there or gr uh, maybe a group out there that probably doesn't like women but they don't know to what degree or what sensitivity you know what i'm saying it's like that um, and maybe that's also partially because this is man-centered and it's not any sort of focus on women. And I feel like women do tend to get more hate for being larger. On True. Now, this is a fact. I will give her this one. Women do get more hate for being fat because men usually have absolutely zero incentive to like physically change themselves or whatever. Like women are primarily in society. Women are primarily judged based off physical appearances. Men, for the most part, like nobody cares about men when it comes to physicality. Like you, you see there, you can literally be skinny, fat, whatever the fuck, and nobody really cares. But for women, women are like hypersexualized. Women are always like, they're always like, incentivized based off body types and things such as so forth. Like entire industries dedicated to this. Men for the most part just look like long bricks. And that's pretty much it. Like, that's like the, the whole synopsis of dudes, whereas women are like very dynamic. So because of that, we incentivize whatever it's it's like the culture behind women and things such and so forth. Like women compete with women and there's fashion industries like you don't have that on the men's side. So, yeah, I mean, she's right about this, but it's a very obvious point. Line. Just my opinion. No, she's right about that. This show is because I do not wish to name or further platform such a truly horrible individual. So I was like, who are we talking about? You're talking about Myron. Talking about Myron probably, right? He wasn't talking about Greg. Wasn't talking about the Asian dude. Wasn't talking about the big... It was Myron. And uh, man, dude, that that interview, bro. It was Myron. Myron's um, a professional person that likes to... He's, he's a professional instigator, 100%. And uh, he's very good at it. Very good at it. Because off the top of my head, I can name a 
bunch of people in the fitness space. You need to watch the video, though. Like, what are you fucking talking about? Did you not watch it? Bro, what's up with people not watching the video? Like, this dude literally said, I was on the most recent Jubilee video called Jacked versus whatever the fuck, right? He was very descriptive about it. And you don't know what video he's talking about? Did you not watch the video? The video's not even that long. It's like 20 minutes. Like, you couldn't watch the video and then pick... I don't know, man. I, I I just don't understand how you how are you gonna make a response video on this guy and you don't even know what he's responding to to make the response video about? Can you can you put in a little bit of work? A little bit, dude. It's not even a lot of work. Go wash dishes and have the video play in the background so you have at least an idea. Who have said some really messed up things? So who are we talking about? Watch the video. The thing is, when you see a fat person, the reason why it's disgusting and the reason why there's so much pushback on this whole body positivity and people make fun of Lizzo, rightfully so. So I'm going to be honest. I have seen random clips floating around on TikTok of this guy, but I genuinely have no idea who he is. See what I'm saying? Like, I know about a lot of red pill stuff, right? I've been aware about the red pill since like 2014. I know about MGTOW. I know about like the SJW organizations. I know about all these like very, very niche organizations because I'm like super in deep with the like the internet culture, right? So I'm, I'm aware of a lot of these like different organizations and stuff like that. But a lot of people are not. A lot of people don't know about this stuff because they're not in deep. They're very surface level on a lot of stuff, which is probably better because like, why would you want to know about this stuff? But I know about this stuff. So like, here's a good example of somebody that doesn't know about the red pill, doesn't know about the hatred towards women, doesn't know about the, the disdain towards women and things such and so forth, right? So this is a good example of people that don't know about the the the, the absolute dis the, the absolute dispersion or like the hatred between fit people and fat people and vice versa, right? Because it's like people just don't know. They're not a part of these organizations or communities. But uh, how do you not know about Myron Gaines, dude? The man, the myth, the legend, the one that hates women. How do you not know about this guy? But just like women that you are not attracted to existing in space, just because you don't find yourself attracted to a fat person does not mean that they are not worthy of respect. Women do not solely exist for your pleasure. I know, but that's usually how these guys think, though. Like, I, it's interesting how, like, watching somebody from the outside in, like, you just got to get, you got to have your own context on this shit. You got to do a little bit more research because that's literally how these guys think. Like, they genuinely believe that women were made for men and women need to serve men and women have no place in society with the exception of being by a man's side and that you, the man is the prize, the woman is just like the side piece or whatever the fuck, and men should have sex with multiple, multiple, multiple women simultaneously. Like, these are how these guys actually think i hate to break that to you he know, bro i i'm sorry to say this shit bro it's, it's like she's bringing this shit up as if this dude hasn't been on the internet for three years and had like monster debates with people that fundamentally disagree with this guy like he's heard all these and i hate that everybody always brings up lizzo lizzo is literally a vegan and she works out all the time and can dance and yeah, but she's the definitive fat acceptance like advocate for for the most part i know she lost a lot of weight good on her by the way thing and and can dance and sing and play the flute. Like, who are you? What are your skills? I don't understand. Typically, people are speaking from a romantic sense, from a heterosexual standpoint of men and women. So that's why. What, what I really hate about Myron is that, like, he has to interject. Oh, man, it's such a fucking. Whenever I watch this do Myron, it, like, it doesn't matter what it is. He's always got to interject, like, the inner dynamics between men and women and how, you know, men dominate this and how women want to do that. It's like, it's always, it's always there. You know, it's it's never not there for this dude. I don't know why looking at yourself in the mirror has now turned into a romantic conversation. And also, why is it heterosexual? Do you think that heterosexual people are the only people who exist? I am a raging fucking lesbian. <laughs> yeah, but like when people talk about relationships, you have to specify if you're talking about gay relationships because most people are heterosexual. So because most people are heterosexual, then if you refer to relationships in general, most people are going to presume you're talking about heterosexual relationships unless you specify. Unless you specify and go, no, I'm talking about all relationships or I'm talking about gay relationships or I'm talking about lesbian relationships, right? Like if unless you specify, most people are going to presume that you're talking about heterosexuality. And I can guarantee you fat and gay does exist. The reality is most of the time when you're fat, you look in the mirror, you're like, damn. I really let myself go. True. I can honestly say that this is never a thought I have ever had because I you're, have. But you, the funny thing is like you're talking about your own personal experience right now. Like most people that are fat, maybe look, 
it could be more so like people that look at themselves in the mirror while they're fat maybe don't look at themselves to a degree to where they're judging themselves like that because I know a lot of times people just kind of look in the mirror like oh, I gotta brush my teeth let me just brush my teeth or I need to go just fix my hair and just move on with my day most people are passive most people are not like admiring themselves in the mirror but I did know somebody I knew a girl that used to um she told me that she used to beat off while looking at herself and I thought it was like really cool for like a really long time that was cool by the way but um most people are just passive like most people are just like looking at themselves and going about their day not many people are like looking in the, the small details seeing what they have and that's fine like that is literally most people so i mean i'm not doubting that you don't have that experience like i'm not doubting that this individual person doesn't have that experience where she looks in the mirror and sees that i'm not saying that but definitely there are a lot of fat people that look at themselves in the mirror and go like what the fuck did i do to myself like i really fucked up my life i really fucked up my body so yeah that's like that's a common thing i feel like I've literally been fat forever yeah but that's probably if you've been fat forever and you know what's interesting about these people is that they've accepted themselves as fat right like that's the entire purpose of this uh, even though they they have such fundamental uh uh problems with being fat and they always complain about this stuff which is really really interesting they have accepted themselves as fat and they've been fat for like the majority of their life for a lot of these people right so like yeah of course why the fuck would you change yourself if you don't think it's an issue right if it, if it ain't broke don't fix it right type shit so why the, the obvious fucking lee you would not but you're not looking at it from the outside in like not everybody that's fat is a part of the fat acceptance community there are i would say the majority of fat people do not want to be fat the majority the majority but most of the people that are fat just don't feel like doing anything about it because it's work and it's, it's it takes a lot of deliberate effort to like actually go about it and like try to change your body but like you obviously you've put yourself in a scenario where you don't even have to believe that anymore you've actually convinced yourself that is nothing wrong with being fat it's literally okay and there's like no health complications and stuff like that you've convinced yourself of that so i don't doubt that you don't feel that but you need to be looking at the majority of people you need to be looking at it from the sense of like okay i'm the anomaly here i'm not the one that should be feeling this naturally because i'm literally a part of an organization called fat acceptance right fat liberation you know that so why the fuck bro that'd be like the emperor right the emperor of fucking star wars right the emperor of the uh, the fucking empire and going like i just don't think i'm a bad guy like i just don't think the empire is really bad like i just don't think that at all anyway shh, you know like that's what you're doing basically dude like you you can't acknowledge you're looking at it from yourself but it's not you're you're an anomaly there is no i let myself go i was born almost a 10 pound baby dude what are you doing right now what the fuck is this claim i'm sorry bro i don't know what this claim is gonna go to but this is a <sighs> I'm already smelling some severe bullshit right now. I'm going to keep it a buck. When you're fat as a child, you're fat for the rest of your life. That's a factual statement. And if you're not, then you broke the mold. It's very unlikely for somebody to be fat as a child and grow up and then be fat as an adult and then break that because it takes a lot of work to like break out of the mold because you you grew up like that it's like completely fine in your ideology most people are the same people they are but by the time they're 16 so like past 16 you're just like you're just basically building on top of whatever you you built upon by the time you're 16 if that makes any sense right uh but it takes a lot of work to like go through that foundational structure and like break through one of those you understand but uh anyway uh, this uh, it sounds like a bad point but i'm willing to listen there is no i let myself go i was born almost a 10 pound baby and i see pictures of myself when i was like two three four kindergarten where like i was bigger than everyone else i was that means that your mom <laughs> i don't want to be mean here but that means your parents failed you if you were fat as a child your parents literally didn't give a fuck about you or they were ignorant and i'm willing to accept both of those things those both of those things can be simultaneous and the the great thing about today's society is that we have the internet and we have all these resources to find out about diet exercise and on so on and so forth like growing up in maybe the 80s and 90s and so, like before that point nutrition really wasn't a thing like many people didn't know what what nutrition was and i know this was a thing because if you look at like bronze age bodybuilders so like guys that were in the 1800s like the late 1800s up until like the early 1900s right these guys didn't know shit about how to lift weights they didn't know about like nutrition and things like that and these guys had really good physiques but they were very few and far between between if you look at like the dieting regimen of these guys they were eating like crazy pastas and they were eating like pizzas and shit like that and then they were lifting things they didn't know how, how to properly 
um, bench press. The bench press wasn't even invented. Like, the idea, right? A lot of these dudes, when they looked at the old Greek statues of, like, heroes and stuff like that, they thought that was, like, fake, right? No, like, people thought that, and they like, this is not real. Like, dudes, people cannot look like that. But then they did. And then they were like, holy shit, this is crazy. So nutrition has been a very, very new implementation in our society, right? Up until like, if you look at the 1960s bodybuilders, right? If you look at Arnold, if you look at Lou Ferrigno, um, you look at Sergio, right? You look at all these guys, they looked great in the 1960s, right? Uh, but, but as the time went on and you go to like the early 2000s, which in my opinion was the peak of bodybuilding, you see Arnold. And which was like, I believe, a seven-time Mr. Olympia compared to Ronnie Coleman, who was an eight-time Mr. Olympia. And you compare the two levels, right? And you go, oh my God. It's so jarring because like Ronnie Coleman has got like a hundred extra pounds of muscle on him and it's, it's, it's detailed muscle. He's, he's literally dry. Like you can see the muscle fibers on this dude. That's because like as time goes on and we become more and more and more and more detailed in diet and exercise, like the athletes of today would blow the athletes out of the water from the eighties and then before, because we have so much more and we have all the advantages of what we knew before and what we know now. So when I hear somebody go like, oh, I was like fat as a kid, I'm not doubting that you were fat as a kid. You probably just, your parents maybe didn't have the expertise or the know-how, and there probably wasn't a lot of places to find that information. So it was like really, really, really difficult to implement or help your chil children, right, to become thin. And maybe they just didn't know it was a bad thing. But most of the time when I see that, I just go, your parents were probably just lazy. And that's okay because a lot of people are just lazy default. Most people are lazy. Most people are not truth seekers as well. Most human human beings as a whole are not truth seekers. Most people just want to hear their own words be echoed a whole bunch of other times and reconfirm their biases, right? That's literally what human beings are. And I get it. It's really, really easy to just keep doing that. And it's really hard to hear the truth sometimes. And as an adult, and when you have a child, it's like super, super, super beneficial to have a very well-rounded individual that knows about nutrition. But if you don't know anything about nutrition, it's going to be very difficult. But nowadays, like almost no excuse, right? Like the internet is almost free for everybody for depending on where you are. Like there are programs and so on and so forth. We, we know a lot more about nutrition than we ever have before. And if the argument you're making is, I was fat as a child, therefore it's just natural for me to be fat as an adult. This woman's like 350, okay? I know that she looks like she's thinner here. She's not. She carries most of her weight in the lower lower extremities, okay? I've seen her target video. So when you're going through your, your, your life and you're going, I was fat as a kid, so it's almost natural for me to be fat as an adult. That is the most dumb statement I can possibly get from you because like, are you actually trying to tell me that because you were like 10 or 15 pounds over what you should have been as a kid, somehow that's going to mean that you being 350 pounds as an adult is somehow like those two things are linked? What are you fucking crazy? No, that is not the case, bro. You are eating some high ass calorie counts to maintain the body size that you're at currently. That is not the truth never meant to be a thin person so. that's not true Bro, i'm sorry dude. i'm just like it's just the 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 level of the level of ignorance these people have and purposeful ignorance as well because a lot of this information not only is it it's there and ready for you to receive most of the information is imbued into you as you grow up like everybody knows when you grow up fatness is not good okay literally it's not good i remember being in i remember being elementary school and we had a puerto rican child named jose he was so fat that he literally played santa claus for like fourth grade uh for like the christmas for the christmas celebration i'm not even joking with you that's how fat he was like it was we had we had no teachers that were fatter than him, and he was the number one nominee to play as the Puerto Rican Santa Claus, okay? And people sat on his fucking lap, and nobody knew he was like, I don't know, 10? I don't know how old you are fucking four, when you're in fourth or fifth grade, but regardless, the point I'm making is, dude, no, that's ridiculous. That is ridiculous. You are eating high calorie counts to maintain this size. Why do you think I'm dumb? Do you think I'm stupid? Do you think I'm just gonna like automatically accept the fact that you're just telling me that you're just naturally fat? No, I'm not dumb. And if you believe that, then you might be dumb. No, you're dumb. You're dumb. This is where like, I was bigger than everyone else. I was never meant to be a thin person. So no, I have never looked. You, you can't say you were never meant to be a thin person. Dude, how, what's your calorie count? Can we go through that real quick? Can you tell me real quick? Can you go through like the, like, let's go through a week 
and tell me how many cal what's the calorie count day by day give me the average okay like work me through it and then i'll tell you if you are meant to be a thin person or not i would love to know that give me the exercise level are you walking can you walk are you just laying down most of the day are you living in a sedentary position do you work outside do you have a job that requires you to sit down all day like these things are all going to impede your ability to be thin because you're eating a lot Uber Eats is probably on your phone. It's probably one of the most used apps on your fucking shit. Go to your screen, go to your screen time and tell me what your most used app is. If it's Uber Eats, you got a problem, okay? There's no way you're gonna try to convince me of this. Like these people are, man, dude, they real deal think we're stupid for believing this shit. I was bigger than everyone else. I was never meant to be a thin person. So no, I have never looked at myself and gone, oh, I let myself go. I've been this way my entire you, Okay, so I hear what you're saying. You never let yourself go because you've always been go. That's what I'm hearing, right? It's not that you started from a place of thin and then you body slammed a ton of food and then you became fat. I see what you're saying. You're not wrong. You've been fat for your whole life. You've always been let go, if that makes any sense. So, I mean, you're technically right, but simultaneously, this is what I always say about these fat people is like, they don't actually know what they look like because they've been fat for their entire lives. And obviously, if you're fat as a child, you're going to be fat for the rest of your life for the most part. So this person is literally telling you that they've been fat for their entire lives and therefore they have not let themselves go, which is true. But it's really sad to say that because you are a thin person. You're just coating yourself with literally layers and layers and layers and layers of fat. I want you to go ahead and Google somebody's body with layers and layers of fat on them compared to a normal sized person dude are you telling me that's okay that's normal that's completely okay that's like that's what people should look like nah dude no obviously obviously fucking not you just had bad nutritional advice when you were younger and you have bad nutritional advice now it's okay just acknowledge it dude you know, lose some weight and then you find out what you actually look like fucking life i'll sit at myself and go on oh i let myself go i've been this way my entire fucking life sad also not Oof. to brag but like I'm fucking hot. Dude, listen, bro. Okay, dude. Nah, bro. Come on. What are you doing right now? What are you doing right now, bro? Why are you wearing this draped over shit? By the way, she does carry all her weight in the hips down. You can't see it because she's wearing black. You can kind of see a little bit on the side here. It's kind of like lumping over. But... <sighs> This is really how you go. This is really how you're gonna dispel all these like, nah, like I'm hot. I'm so great. I'm, let me just show you a picture of me covering up literally like 60% of the mass that you can't see. That's what I'm seeing. That's what you're. That's what. That's what I'm getting at right here. But I, yeah, whatever you say, whatever you say. I can't even believe you're still using a butt plug on the back of your phone though. No, that's crazy, bro. I haven't seen one of these being used since 2016. Let me know if you still have a butt plug on the back of your phone ramifications of the term midsize. I almost get that's the end of the video right there. That's crazy, bro. She really said she in real time right now. Go watch Jordan's video on this. I am a hundred percent in agreement with everything. But this is one of the reasons why the fat liberation community has pushed back so hard on creators calling themselves midsize. Because we have this whole group of people that's like, well I'm not thin, so I need a different label. So because of the popularization of mid-sized bodies, a lot of people out there on social media think like, oh, well, a size 8 to like a 16 is deemed acceptable because that's mid-size. And anything over that, you know, they're just lazy and they should do better and they don't deserve clothing because... Look, I don't really know what anything... Bro, like women's sizes are so incredibly fucked because like if a dude told me, right, if I was hanging out with a guy... And he was like, yeah, bro, I wear a, a 6X. I'd be like, hold up, bro. You're fucking fat as fuck. Like, you are massive if you are that fit. You're wearing a 6X. That's fucking big as fuck. If you wear a 3X, a 4X, you're big as shit, right? And also, it's very easy for guys because most dudes can just tell you the weight. And you'll go, yeah, bro, you're a fucking bowling ball. You're big as hell. You're massive. You're big. It's very easy for me to identify that. But a lot of women have this, like, almost kind of like there's... There's a little bit more pushback from it, right? Like, I've heard many women, um, like, usually dudes, if I talk to guys and they go, yeah, bro, I'm 250. I know I'm fat. I'm, I'm like, really, really obese right now. I got to lose some weight. Like, it's almost always like that, right? But for women, if you talk to a girl and they go, I'm 250 and I'm five foot three, I'm, and I go, bro, that's, like, literally obesity. Like, you're literally dying. They'll go, but it looks good. But it looks good. Like, it looks good on me. Like, it's not bad. It's, it's not, like, bad weight. This is just, like, how I look. And I'm just, like... What the fuck are you trying to do right now? Like, are you trying to actually trying to, are you trying to convince me that like death is okay for you because it looks good? No, that's not good. It's not a, it's not a, it's not a flex. It's not something to be like happy about. I'm like, all right, great. 
the weight went to the areas that you wanted to go to, right? Which usually is thighs, boobs, butt. That's great. Awesome. I'm happy for you that you have extra expenditures, right? That's fine. But that doesn't take away from the fact that it's literally negative on your health. Like if you're supposed to weigh like 130 and you weigh 250 or even like 230 or even over 200 pounds, for the most part, that shit is literally impeding your ability to live. Like you're probably deducting a few years off your life at the bare minimum and probably way more than that. And then also all the negative effects that are going to come with the extra weight on your body. So no, I just don't think that's the case. I just, I'm sorry to say it. Like I'm happy that your weight went to the areas that you wanted to go to. A lot of women are not privileged in that particular way. Like most people, when they gain weight, they don't really have a choice where it goes unless you're going for like medical invention, uh, intervention, sorry. There's most of the time, it's just going to go to places that you probably don't want it to go to. But I'm happy that yours went to that whatever area, but it's not a reason to keep it on because it looks good. Most people don't even think it looks good, by the way. Most people are probably just... Most people are probably just telling you what you want to hear because they feel bad for you. If I'm going to keep it a buck with you, that's really what most people are doing. Most people don't want to start conflict with you. Most people are not going to tell you the truth. Hey, that really doesn't look good, dude. Your thighs are literally like twice the size of my midsection. You need to lose weight, sis. It's not good. Anyway. Because they're too fat. This goes back to the fatness spectrum as well. Yeah, because like, here's the thing. Most people that are fat don't even want to be fat. That's just a common thing, okay? It's it's not a good thing to be fat. So when people say I'm midsize, what they're actually trying to do is almost lessen the blow. But it's not actually lessening the blow. Like, I will give you this, right? You're basically in the realm of fatness, but you're not labeling it as fatness. So it kind of takes away the power of being fat, right? But in reality, it's like living in a house that's that's like falling apart and you going, this is okay because you're still living in it and it's relatively okay. Like it's all right. You can live in this depleted, de deplorable apartment that's like falling apart or you can fix it or you can actually address the problems, right? Instead of labeling it as it's okay. Like this is livable. Everything is fucking livable, 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 dude. I can go and like live in a box outside like I'm Squidward asking for a change in that fucking cup. Everything is livable. Sure. But is it? Is it good? Is it is it is it actually something you want to do? No, probably fucking not. Like if you have the choice to do this or not do this, most people would not do this. So if you want to clatter, cl and like I see this quite a bit when it comes to plus size and other other vocabulary terms, right? They use these words to try to lessen the blow. Stop. Just keep yourself a buck. When you look in the mirror and you see that big ass gut and that shit sticks out farther than your meat. Like if you sit there as an erect, as an erect man, fully stiffed up and your gut still overreaches that, lose some weight. That's crazy. That's crazy, bro. I don't know what you're doing. I don't know how many times I've heard dudes say, I haven't seen my dick in four years. What are you doing? Four years? Four years? And the same thing for women. If your vagina, okay, if your belly button is deeper than your vaginal crevice, it's not good. It's not good. It's not a delightful thing, dude. At that point, you might as well just have that as like the, the place that you go. At least it's more protection or something like that. I don't fucking know. The point I'm making is sometimes people just put up with things that just don't need to be put up with. It's not something, it's not cool to have a, a, a nine inch deep vagina. It's not cool to have a gut that protrudes out so goddamn far that when you walk into the room, people see your gut three days before you walk in. It's not good. It's not. But if that's what you want to do and that's how you want to live your life, that's fine. But you mislabeling it is only hurting yourself. You understand? That'd be like going outside and looking at a car and be like, wow, look at that beautiful, beautiful sedan. And then I look at it and I go, bro, that's a whole ass 18 wheeler. What are you doing? What are you, ta what are you talking about? It's not a fucking, it's not a sedan. It's the same thing. What are you doing, bro? Why are you trying to mislabel it to try to make it seem like you're not as bad as it actually is? It's bad which, you know, gets brought up every so often. There should not be a more acceptable type of body. We should be respecting everyone and fighting for access. It just, it just, it's just interesting to me how people say this and they'll go, there's, there shouldn't be something as a more acceptable body. I don't even think this person believes in that because we do have hierarchies depending on how somebody looks and how somebody acts and things such and so forth. Like usually people that are athletes are the ones that we pay the most for the depending on those particular things. And when you're talking about somebody that's going to be able-bodied compared to somebody that's not able-bodied, I'm not trying to be ableist here, but usually in our society, in most societies, we're going to put, we're going to incentivize the person that is able-bodied because usually that person is not going to have fewer problems compared to the person that is not able-bodied. Like if somebody doesn't have legs and compared to somebody that does have legs, odds are the person that has legs is going to have more opportunity. That's just simple fact, right? And I know it sucks to say, I know it does, but 
it's the truth. It's what it is. Okay. And I, I definitely think that we should have accessibility items for people that don't have the ability to walk or have like very, very hard times doing those things. I think that those things should exist. Obviously I'm not like a fucking super villain, even though I have a mustache that curls, I'm not a super villain, right? I am 100% okay with accessibility items, but the difference is like, you're not acknowledging what you're basically saying is like everybody is the same. No, we're not the same, okay? And there are very key differences and things that are going to impede how you occupy the life that you're in compared to somebody that's not going to have to live with those same impediments. You understand? So that's all we're doing. We're just acknowledging the differences and going, okay, we need to adjust accordingly. But some of these differences, you guys are ceding the responsibility that you have that you put upon yourself by gaining the weight. And instead of like doing something because you did it to yourself, obviously the, the best answer here would be to do it for yourself to lose weight. But instead you're doing, you're going, the government should help me. Society should help me. They should be the ones that do that. And it makes sense for a guy that's missing legs. It makes sense for a guy that's missing or somebody that has things that they can't control. That makes sense, right? You had an accident, whatever the fuck, right? But for people that are gaining weight, I'm glad that you guys have accessibility options. I'm really happy, but you cannot ignore the fact that you put yourself in this scenario and you have to help yourself out of that same scenario. You're the only one that can dig yourself up. You need help, that's fine, but you have to be the one admitting is the first step. I went shopping for straight size clothing yesterday and it was a weird experience. My girlfriend and I are going to a dinner in a couple weeks and she needed an outfit. So the first place we stopped was H&M. But you know what, man? You know what I really love about women is that you guys will literally go, I need an outfit for going out to dinner. I've been wearing the same clothes for four years, dude. And I think it's so interesting when girls go, ah, we got to go shopping for an outfit. We got to go shopping for a new bikini or we need to go shopping for this new bra. We got to go shopping for this new thing. And I always go, why your wardrobe is like nine times bigger than mine i don't even have underwear and then i think about that and i go maybe i'm just maybe i just suck maybe i just don't know what i'm doing maybe i just don't know how to like properly engage in society and then i think this is why you need a girlfriend like even gay men should probably get a girlfriend because women know how to do stuff and they'll probably help you out really, really a lot. And me as a man, I'll help you pick out a really, really good TV or I'll help you pick out that new Lego, Lego Venator set at Lego at the Lego store. Yeah, we're really good at that. And I went through the racks and just picked out things in her size. I will now especially never understand why people are like, I can never find a small, I can never find a medium. Because that is a majority of what was there. And while, yes, some of the things that I was like, ooh, this is cute, they might not have had in her size. For women, too, though. This is, like, this is very, very centered towards women here, right? Because, like, ask any dude that goes shopping in, like, a regular store, right? If you're going to, like, a, a Macy's or an Old Navy or whatever, the, the women's section is almost, like, 90% of the store sometimes. And then the men's section get, like, you get, like, 5 or tw five or 10% of the store. Because, like, the other 5% is, like, for children. So men have, like, this very, very, very small portion. And then every dude is just there looking at the stuff. And they're just, like, picking through the stuff. Like, yeah, eh, doesn't fit me. Uh, that's a, oh, wow, that's a nice uh Oh, uh, yeah, it's it's not made for me. It says it's, it's missing buttons or something like that, or it doesn't fit me. Um, we have a very limited section. Like when I go when I go clothes shopping, I need a small dude. It's almost never there. OK, or the shirts are like absolutely horrid. Like I'm going to look like Tony Montana from the 80s or something like that. Like it's always gross to me. And uh, yeah, men don't have a lot of options, but it makes sense because men are not the ones primarily buying clothes. Like women are the ones that are buying most of the clothes and buying most of the stuff in general in America. I think it's like 70% of things that are purchased in America are from women, which is, I mean, makes sense, right? Bitches be buying and shit or whatever, like people say. Um, men don't really do that stuff. Like men don't really like every dude, even gay men I've talked to, I've always asked them, like, do you like shopping? The gayest men on the planet, the most flamboyant, the most feminine dudes will tell you, I hate it. It's gross. It's the worst. It's just like a common thing. Like, I don't know. I think it's just a passive ability. Do not like shopping as men. If that was the case, I could look at another rack that had very similar things and find something in her size. <laughs> and clearly I have never had that experience before. So I was like, this is wild. <laughs> But this is also why I will never understand. Why don't you just lose weight then? Like if you want more accessibility options and you know that you can get those more accessibility options by reducing the weight upon your frame even slightly, 
then why don't you do it? it I, I understand, but like, obviously I know why she can't do it because she literally believes that it's impossible to lose weight and there's like no reason to actually do it and it shouldn't be up to her to change herself and it's up to society. Like that's the reason. Before, So I was like, this is wild. <laughs> but this is also and It's also really sad to see somebody saying this shit because it's, what I'm actually hearing from this person is that I don't, I'm literally seeing goodness on this other side and I know that it can, I know I can do it, but I'm not going to do it. That's fucking gross. Like this person is literally saying, seeing all the goodness and still does nothing. I will never understand when I talk about how there is 20% of the fashion market for plus size people and plus size women make up 70% of the US population. People are like, but I can't find my size either. 80% of the fashion market is not enough for you who only make up 30% of the population. Like not only does that statistically not make sense, but I had <laughs> the straight size experience yesterday. You guys fail to understand how hard it is to fit your clothes. Like you are a prime example of somebody that is not going to be able to fit the clothes that another woman might be able to fit into at that same size. Let's say hypothetically this woman weighs 300 pounds, but the majority of her weight is in the thighs, okay? Majority of the weight is in the bottom section of your, of your body. So if you were to buy pants and another woman at 300 pounds were to buy those same pants, maybe the pants fit her, but they're not able to fit you because your body is fat in, in these areas and it's harder for you to find clothes in that area. Same thing with your upper body. Maybe your upper body is very thin in comparison to your bottom, right? Now, anytime, because you're 300 pounds, most people, most retailers, when somebody weighs 300 pounds, are going to go, if this person's 300 pounds, they're probably going to carry a lot of weight in the top half, right? So you wear the shirts and everything is very, very, very big on you. So you're gonna have to go to like smaller sizes or whatever. It's very dramatic. It's not gonna be easy to find clothes that fit you accurately across the board all the time. It's never gonna happen. But you continuously complain about it and you say things like, oh, you guys have all the clothing items and you guys are literally the smaller proportion. Yeah, but you guys are literally so incredibly hard to make clothes for. It's like impossible. So please give a little bit of nuance. Of being able to go into a store and literally find multiple outfits, like pieces you can put together to make multiple outfits in her size. And that was for a special occasion and also keeping in mind that she doesn't typically wear like dresses or things that are more femme. So I can't imagine the option she would have had if we were looking for something more femme or just looking for like everyday kind of pieces. And if one more person tells me to stop complaining about how the majority of stores don't carry plus sizes and that we should just go to our stores, Lane Bryant and Torrid, the reason those stores exist is because no one else carries our size. It is not the same. It's a fat storage condition that is not obesity. It will not improve from weight loss. Hi, I was diagnosed with lipedema about two years ago. If you're someone who has come across people who have lipedema and you've been wondering if you have it too, this video that I stitched would be a good one to go look at. I also have a playlist about lipedema, how I got diagnosed, my symptoms, all of the things. But this is also just kind of a reminder that you can't tell someone's health status from how they look. It's just, it, it, you know, sometimes they they're going in the right direction, you know? Sometimes they go in the right direction, but then like it immediately just takes a hard right turn and then you go like, oh man, you, you almost had it. You almost had it. Almost. Almost had that shit. Somebody can let me know down below. I'm not too familiar. I'm pretty sure from the research that I've done that if you have lipedema, most of the people that contract lipedema are people that are above, people that are obese, people that are fat, people that are obese. I'm pretty sure that's like... I've never, almost never heard of somebody that got lipedema and they were smaller. I have never seen that. People that were like straight size or whatever, average size, I've not seen that. But I could be wrong. I'm pretty sure also that if you are fat and you have lipedema, losing weight is going to, at the very bare minimum, alleviate some of those symptoms. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure it would. But I know it's not something that you can ever get rid of. But I, I, from what I've researched, I'm pretty sure that if you lose weight, it will alleviate some of those symptoms. Not all of them, but some of those symptoms. And then also... The idea that you can't judge somebody's health statuses by the way that they look is, it's true, but it's also not true because we're talking about obesity here, right? We're talking about people that are fat. 
We're literally talking about people that have medical issues from being fat. So if you were thinner and you had like AIDS, okay, let's say you weighed like 130 pounds and you that was the weight that you were supposed to be. And you were technically unhealthy because you had AIDS or you had some other type of undiagnosed disease or like an, an ambiguous disease that you couldn't see, right? Then yes, technically you cannot judge that person's health status because you probably presume that person is healthy based off the way they look. But most of the time, okay, especially if we're talking about people that are fat, you can't because they're fat and you're literally seeing the trauma, the absolute disrespect on that person's body because of the fat, which is automatically bad on you. That is literally unhealthy. So if we're talking about fat people, which I know we are, because literally at the very beginning of the video, it said obesity, then yes, yes, 100%. If you're fat, you're it's negative on your health. And I can't assume it because I know it is. Yes. And that doesn't take away from anything, though. I mean, you're right, but you're also not right. Nobody uses this word the way you do. Because I cannot tell you how many people on the internet have told me, oh, just lose weight. Oh, just. You know, it's interesting that because the way that she's using this, right, is that basically she's saying, so you're the way she's saying this is like, you can't judge somebody's health based off the way they look because there are thinner people that have these particular illnesses that you can't identify. Therefore, if you look upon me and say that I am I am overweight and that is unhealthy, that is wrong because there are people that are actually unhealthy and you can't see that. And then you're trying to ju you're trying to draw that you're trying to draw that line, which doesn't make sense because you're actively ignoring that being fat is a problem. That's the problem, okay? That's the issue there. I'm not disagreeing that if somebody's thinner, they can be un ambiguously unhealthy. In the same way that I'm not gonna I'm not gonna disagree I'm not gonna disagree that being fat, sure you you can have a thinner person that's technically unhealthier compared to the fatter. person person but you cannot deny being fat is a fundamentally unhealthy thing that's the problem so when i'm hearing you say this what i'm actually hearing you say is that you actually think you're healthy like you actually think you're healthy like you genuinely think that the weight on your body is not negatively affecting you and that's crazy um i hope that you live a very long life i really do but if you continue to believe the way that you're believing it now that's only going to negatively affect you, dude. That is literally terrible. That is actually incredibly, uh, I don't even know how you can even get there, but GG on that one. Many people Slay Queen Edges. on the internet have told me, oh, just lose weight. Oh, just eat a salad. Oh, just whatever. I have lipedema. Man, okay, fine. You have lipedema, but like, dude, uh, what does that have to do with losing weight for your health? That's fine. Okay, bro, whatever, dude. That's great. That's great, man. That's like a, that's like somebody going like, hey, bro, you know, you should probably be eating better. And then that person goes, but I'm lactose intolerant. Okay. Yeah, I didn't say like drink milk. Like there are other stuff that you can drink. You know that, right? Like you can drink water and other things like that. It's the same thing here. You have lipedema, but like, what does that mean? Like, does that mean you just are incapable of losing weight? Does that mean, does that actually what that means? Or is it, are you trying to say you have lipedema, therefore I'm going to be unhealthy regardless, so I should just never try to lose weight because I'm always going to be unhealthy based off this one thing. That's also dumb because what you're basically saying is because I have, because I don't have all the money, I should just never get more money. That's, that's, that's what that is. Okay. Just can't improve your health, I guess. Me. Oh, just lose weight. Oh, just eat a salad. Oh, just whatever. I have lipedema. It's not going to change <laughs> what my legs and my arms look like. We should be able to treat everyone with respect, regardless of their health status. This woman's dumb. I'm sorry to say this shit. This woman is literally dumb. Uh, that's it's just one of the worst ways of looking at that shit, bro. This woman is literally suffering some from some kind of like mega, some mega cognitive dissonance. But whatever, doesn't matter. You know what? You know it does matter. You, you matter. You matter so much. You beautiful, amazing, spectacular person. But anyway, we're gonna end the video here, guys. If you enjoyed today's video, I'd appreciate very much. Leave a like, comment, subscribe, sharing the video. All those things I'd appreciate tremendously. So if you can do that stuff for me, I would appreciate you tremendously. If you watch the video in its entirety and or you're here right now, leave it down below by typing in sugar, 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 because you're sweet like sugar, beautiful, sweetened person, a little salty, a little salty, but that's normal. It's okay to be salty as a human being. Most people are salty, like physically, like when you sweat or your body in general, like if you just like, if you licked a part of your body, you'd probably feel salted. It'd probably be salty, but it's okay because you're also sweet, tremendously sweet. And you got that fiery and you got that, you got that Latina heat or that Latin heat or whatever you want to call it, Latinx heat or whatever. That sounds cringy, but you know what I'm talking about. 
super spicy, ultra spicy. You're the spiciest of the spiciest. You are flaming hot, flaming hot, flaming hot. Stay away from the frozen food section because you are going to literally melt everything in that entire section of how hot you are. But anyway, guys, um, if you want to follow me on social media, you can by clicking the link in the description of this channel or the link in the description of this video. And that's all my social media is. It's my... Twitter, my Discord, my Instagram, everything's just listed there. If you want to follow me on any of that stuff, feel free to do so. Please do so. Enjoy the rest of your day, guys. 